we'll get rid of our trip to Hope, as exciting as it was. And maybe we could leave that there, actually. Oh, I'll put the whole thing back. And we'll get rid of this average speed here. We'll calculate the average speed for our actual graph here. If we graph this, again, this is distance, which I suppose I was using a Y, if you really want this to here. Um, maybe I should use D, because then it's easier if I can use function notation, if that doesn't freak you out too much. So if I call this D of T instead of Y, because then we can, it's, it's a little quicker and shorter on the notation. So this is my graph. I'm sure you know what it looks like. It looks like a parabola, right? There's my graph. In reality, I understand that it hits the ground or it hits a terminal velocity or something happens, but we're just looking at it as though it's that function. So what we're saying then is if this is 0 and this is 2, here's 2, um, we need to know this value before we figure out. It starts at 0 and it goes up. How far has it fallen in total there? If we wanted to figure this out, we need to know what these two point coordinates are, and this one's easy, it's 0, 0. We need to know what, um, I mean, I'm going to start by writing this, but then I'm going to write it with the symbols we're actually using here, as in we want the height at 2, that's this, right? The distance, how far it was at 2, and I'm going to put this in here even though we know it's 0, the distance it had fallen at 0. The difference between the two, right? This is change in distance, change in time. And that I have to divide by what to get my slope? Right? So I'm basically saying I'm taking whatever, you know, this is whatever the distance at 2 is minus the distance at 0. That's what this is. And I want to divide it by this, right? Well, how a distance is that? That distance is how much again? 2, right? I'm going to put 2 minus 0 just because then we see it matches up with these numbers, right? I realize it's 2, but that's, that's, that's this, right? That's just saying subtract the y values, divide it by subtract the x values, change in distance over change in time. I'm actually going to write the function in here and say 16 times 2 squared minus 16 times 0 squared. I realize it looks a lot more complicated than it needs to be, but to match it up when we do something later, it's helpful if we see that. Do you see where that comes from? So you can work out some of those numbers in your head, right? 16 times 2 squared is 64. At, at, at 2 seconds, it's fallen 64 feet. Minus 0 over 2 minus 0, or in other words, what is that? 32, what would the units on that be? Feet per second. 32 feet per second. That is the that is the average speed. If you if you look at it, and although this graph I drew up there is beautiful, it's probably better if we look at a graph like this. If you uh, if you look at this, that green line is this is what we just calculated. We calculated the slope of that green line. That green line is called a secant line. We calculated the slope of the, the, the secant line through those two things there. Let's move that up a bit so we can see what we're doing. And no, maybe not quite that much. Um, let's get rid of this tangent line for a second. We calculated that slope through there. That slope is 32. What we want to know, though, is this. We want to know this, the slope at 2. Now, when we want to calculate the instantaneous velocity... We want to know the slope at 2. At the instant, t is 2. So that's what we're going to do now. Now, I obviously took up all my space with this. So I'm going to just add some space, but maybe you wrote smaller and you can fit it all in here. We want to know now the instantaneous velocity at 2. Visually on the graph, we're now looking for... Move that out of the way. Visually, we're looking for this. We want the slope at 2. We don't want the slope between 0 and 2. That's the average. This is the instantaneous. If the rock had a speedometer on it, that's what this says, right? But this value would be if it had, I don't know if you guys have a car that has one of those, Here, how long have your, has your trip been and what's your average velocity and all that, like a little kind of a, some of the cars have that now. This is the average since you started your trip. This is the instantaneous. 
and we are going to see how we can get the red line from the green line. What would you predict the red line is here, just looking at it? Number one, you can tell it's higher than 32. At the beginning, what was the rock traveling? You said it before. Right the instant it broke loose, it's zero, right? If I was to move that uh, red line down here, if I was to move this down here, it's, it's starting, it's traveling zero, right, when it breaks loose. It's speeding up, and then at two, it's traveling a lot quicker than the average, right? But we want to know what that is, all right? Here's how we're going to do it. We are going to use this. We're going to write an expression in general for this between the two points. So I'm just I'm going to put one of the points at two, and I'm going to put one of the points on one side of two. For now, I'm going to put it on the upper side of two, but it doesn't matter if I put it on the lower or upper side. It doesn't matter because it's going to do the same thing. So let's just put that there, and we're going to draw a picture before we before we go to that. I'm I'm doing this down below, right? Because I am out of room here. So draw your picture, and you're going to have you have this curve. This point we're going to call two. We're going to put another point up here. The distance in between the points I am going to call, what should I call it? I'm going to call it a little bit. The letter people use in calculus for a little bit is H, for a little bit. I don't know. That's what they do. You can feel free to call it whatever you want, but H seems to be the the letter of choice among the mathematicians of the world. You want to calculate, you want to write an expression for the slope between those two. We did it once, but we used actual numbers, right? We came up with a number here. We want to write it as an expression and then see what we can do with it. So what is this x value right here? What is that called? If this little bit is h and this is 2, 2 plus h. Here's 2 plus h. Notice that I could put this point on the other side and it would still be called 2 plus h, but h would be negative, right? h could be negative here. If h was negative 1, where does that put that point? Puts it over here, right? So it's okay. It'll still work even if the point is on the other side. It doesn't matter that I've drawn it on this side, okay? So you got 2 and 2 plus a little bit. The little bit might be 2. The little bit might be actually more than 2. It doesn't matter. We're going to write an expression for the slope through those two points. What is the slope through those two points? We need these things here first, right? Remember that the function was d. So this, is, this bottom one is d of what? d of 2. What's the top one? d of 2 plus h. Whatever those x values are, those are just the y values. Okay? If, if you want to keep it straight for yourself, this is like y2. This is like y1. This is like x2. This is like x1. We're just going to write an expression for the slope now. If we're going to write an expression for that slope, the slope between those two points is is what? How do I write the slope between those two points? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right? So how do I write that? What do I got? I have d of, which one comes first? 2 plus h minus d of 2. On the bottom I have, what do I have? 2 plus h minus 2. Some of you were very clever and you said 2 plus h minus 2. Hey, wait a second. That's just, it's just h. Which makes sense because that's what we did in defining it in the first place, right? h is the distance in between. So you can call it h on the bottom if you want, but you can also put that there, right? h is the distance in between. I'm actually going to write in the specific, what the specific function is instead of saying d, right? So I'm going to write 2 plus h. What was the actual specific function? Instead of d, what was the function again? 16 times that squared, right? So I'm just, I'm just writing 16 times that squared instead of the, the d representing the function, right? And then the other part, I realize we can work this out, but 16 times 2 squared. 
this is my slope between those two points, right? This is still just the average slope between those two points. But it's an expression where the variable is what? What's the variable here? This is a slope expression where the variable is the distance in between the two points, right? Slope expression where the variable is the distance between the points. Now that's all well and good. But the reason we want to do this is because what we want to do now, if we have an expression, we can put in whatever number we want for h. All right. What do we really want to know? We want to know the instantaneous speed, so we want to know the slope when h is what? Very, very small. What we really want to know is what is it when h is Zero, right? When h is zero, you're pushing the two points right together, right? What we want to know is if we push this right together, the slope of the green line and the slope of the red line match up. When they're far apart, they're different. The closer you push this, the more they're the same, right? No matter which side you come from, whether you come from this side or that side, it doesn't matter. The slope's the same when you push them together. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a table and we're going to try, what if we make h1 what do we make what do we get if we make h what's h when i put the point there what's h 0 0.5 0 0.2 0 0.1 0 0.01 and then we're going to try from the other side negative 1 negative 0.5 negative you know lots of things there and you're going to see what you get and you're going to predict remember we said how did the slope of the red line compare to this, which was 32? Remember we calculated 32? It's got to be more than that, right? So th as long as you keep that in mind that that's what we're doing, then you'll be good here. So we're going to get the calculator. We're going to make it, might as well let it do the calculations instead of doing it by hand a whole bunch. You remember, you can make tables on here quite easily. So you... You need to put the function in. Remember, the function is the function is an expression for the slope. The function is not the yeah. If you want to borrow a calculator, please grab one from the front. I'm going to stop this anyways, and then we'll do the calculator stuff. You're putting in the function for the slope. You're not putting in 16x squared. You're putting in the function for the slope, and then you're setting up a table where you can put in your own x values. You do that while I'm stopping and starting, changing the film here.